watching Out of the Box Podcast with Rosie Tran. I'm so excited to be here with the host of Chow Time with Sammy, Sammy Larson. Sammy, how are you? Hey, nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you. (laughs) So I'm really excited to talk about your show, Chow Time. Um, I want to hear a little bit about your story and how you got started doing organic cooking and holistic cooking for dogs. Okay. So um, as you know, my name's Sammy. And of course, I got my main man, Pete, here. (laughs) he doesn't leave his mother's side so um I always loved animals and I always had like an animal uh little business like since I was six years old and I always took care of animals and um as I got older uh, I realized that a lot of people um didn't want to adopt special needs animals or animals Mm -hmm. that had problems um physical problems um and of course emotional so anyway, I had a manager that we both know, that guy Joe, and Joe had found um, this dog named Buddy at the Van Nuys shelter, and he was really sick. They didn't know what was wrong with him, and they did all these tests. Aww. So I, yeah, so um, I was friends with Joe, and I was like, you know what? I've always watched special needs animals. I have t- years and years of experience with all different kinds of animal sickness. And uh, let me watch your little guy. He was going to New York for the weekend, and I fell in love with the dog. And the dog was a lot of work. So I was like, let me adopt him. <laughs> so when I got him, he had, um, it's called inoperable liver shunts, meaning Aww. basically his liver is not working properly and inoperable, meaning they can't operate. So the only solution, well, I went, you know, when I adopted him, I talked to the vets and the vets were like, oh, he's going to have a very short lifespan. And um, there's really no options. So I was like, I'm not going to take this answer. I'm going to do my own research. So, um, you know, I started doing my own research, which is a way I think people find out so much more things than from doctors or vets. And I found a Yahoo group of all things, a Yahoo group. (laughs) And the Yahoo group was all of these uh, people that were cooking for dogs with inoperable liver shunts and giving them a better quality of life and a better you know, they were living longer and just everything was better. So I started doing more research so that I came up with this um, recipe and I started cooking it for Buddy and the, this dog that they gave like months to live wound up living like another seven or eight years. Oh, wow. So it wasn't yeah. just like you extended his life a year, the actual no, diet change. This was like phenomenal. I mean, but, yeah, everyone, you know, everyone who knew Buddy, everyone, um, the vet, the, the vet techs, they were all like shocked, you know? And um, Joe, of course. And uh, so when I was thinking about Chow Time with Sammy Larson, what I wanted to do with this show or, you know, streaming show now, it was show other people, like, let's say you get a dog with this or, you know, Joe Schmo or one of my friends and the vet's like, oh, the, you know, not, not, uh, you know, the dog has a short lifespan. There's nothing you can do. I wanted to show people there's every nutrition can help every single ailment even if you just improve the quality of life, like nutrition is like huge, huge, huge factor. And um, do you think that a lot of the commercial foods cause health problems in dogs or can exacerbate them? Hey, honey. Yes, I think a lot of them are good. I think a lot of them are bad. Um, I think, you know, the cheaper ones, but you know, there's dogs that live 18 years on um, Purina. And they're fine, you know? So I think if you have a healthy dog and you have multiple dogs and you don't have the time to cook and your dogs are healthy or, you know, normal, everything's functioning normal, I think it's fine if you want to use a a commercial um, dog food. But I think if your dog has health issues or um, any kind of thing, and if you enjoy it, you can make their, you can make it better. You can make their health better. Um, There's a, There is a documentary on kibble, dry kibble. I forget the name, but um, anyone can Google it. And it's how they they made dog food. Do you remember that, Dan? Was it for the war or something? It's it's dog food. It was um, kibble. And the way they preserve it, it's preserved so that it's going to last for years and years and years and years. Mm -hmm. So do you really want to have a food? 
that's going to last for years and years and years and not go bad. That's like, it's like the McDonald's French fry, right? You can drop a French fry under your chair and it's like the same French fry, like five years later, right? Yeah. Well, they say Twinkies, which I do buy, you know, and indulge, but they say Twinkies can last forever as well. Yeah. So what is included in these holistic meals that you're providing for the special needs dogs? So I started it with, with, um, with, um, buddies and it was just a full meal and I went over uh with the vet and it was basically like a protein a starch a vegetable that would help his liver like digest it and be easily digestible for him and um so then I got other clients that their dogs had like pancreatitis or you know other ailments skin disease uh allergic to chicken and I would just come up with the recipe I'd research it come up with the recipe they would check with their vet so basically it's like a regular meal, like a meal. My thing is too, that my meals, um, you can eat with your dog. It's not like dog. So it's food. human, it's human. human grade. Yeah. It's human grade food and you can share it. And every single thing I've made for Peter or any of the other dogs that I take care of or cats, um, or birds, we eat it too. We eat it too. And so basically it's a full meal, but I also make treats. There's like pupcakes. For the birthday, <laughs> you know, there's like a turkey meatloaf for a dog. There's um, basically it's full meals or just treats, and we do ones for holiday seasons too. Oh, that's nice. So tell me about how you came up with the idea for Child Time with Sammy Larson, which is so, your your YouTube cooking show. Yes. So I doggy cooking um, show. <laughs> yeah, the doggy cooking show. What my initial idea was. I wanted to show other um, pet owners, pet guardians, that there's always hope if they have a sickly animal. That was my initial thought. And then um, when I started sharing the idea with people and started doing it, uh, people with healthy dogs were like, this is awesome. This is so cool. I like this <laughs> recipe because, you know, it's made for like a specific ailment, but it's healthy for everyone and, and, and any animal you know what I mean I mean unless if like I'm not going to give the dog with liver disease the the um the dog the the meal for um you know a dog that's perfectly healthy that's maybe like a fattening meal or something and um sorry I'm watching my husband he's <laughs> yeah uh, so the meals are and I try to always do organic you know sometimes you can't get organic but I always try to do organic. So basically it's like a full meal, a full meal that you would have, you know, a full healthy meal that um, you can make. And like, I cook for Peter and Danny always eats it. Like my husband always eats it. <laughs> we have no food. If it's good enough for the dog, it's good enough for hubby. <laughs> yes, yes, but of course I don't add salt. You can add salt, spice and all that, you know? And believe it or not, you know, um, okay, so what you're saying is that dogs should not have salt or any spices, because I know a lot of times people will feed their dogs table scraps and things like that, and you're saying that's not not advisable. I think everything in moderation is good, like everything, um, but definitely if you're going to go out of your way to cook for your dog, yeah, I wouldn't add any kind of sodium because that's not good for them. They can't. A lot of their part of their system can't process things the way the way our systems do, like you're not going to give your dog caffeine. That's very bad for caffeine. You can't give your dog chocolate. You can't give your dog, they just can't process these things, especially with chocolate. It's the caffeine. They can't have caffeine. They can't have alcohol. They can't have um, things that are like bad for a human, like the salt or whatever. Yeah, they can't have that. But there are, I mean, there is a little sodium in, in canned food. That's obvious because it's part of the preservative, you know, but um, it's definitely a way to control what your dog is eating like is if you had a, a baby you know you're you're gonna try to get the best for the human baby it's a fur baby <laughs> yeah, it's a little fur baby and that's when you know what's going on now now there's times when I don't have time or whatever to um to cook for Peter so I always will have like some foods that I like like the just food for dogs I like that that you know that place that you could buy they do it for you but it's not as uh specific as like the ones I'll make for my specific clients you know according to like what they like or or, or their ailment, you know, and it's basically. So a can you do a shift the diet based on the dog's ailment? You know, cause I know there's so many different special needs dogs. Some dogs have, like you said, pancreatitis, some dogs have, you know, liver issues. 
Yes, like I literally have um, recipes for every ailment and the same ailments and illnesses humans have, dogs have. I mean, like skin, uh, skin allergies, allergies like uh, weather allergies, um, allergic to chicken, uh, overweight, diabetes, um, uh, everything. I mean, it's crazy because you would never think animals can get all these sicknesses, but animals get every single thing that humans get. And I think yeah. that modern day because probably of giving them table scraps and the breeding, the breeders out there that don't know what they're doing. And they, you know, have like the, the father dog and the bait and the, his daughter dog mating and the dogs get all these crazy things. You know, I suspect a lot of the, the liver, I suspect with Buddy that that was like a bad, a bad inbreeding because he was a Poutalian, which is a Italian greyhound and a poodle. Oh. And, <laughs> <laughs> I know, funny, I know. super cute, but he had so many problems. Yeah, you know, he had so many problems, and it's unfortunate. So I think a lot of the backyard breeders are causing a lot of those problems. So know? what about someone who adopts a dog? They're very well meaning. They love pets, but they're on like a really limited budget. You mentioned that um, some kibbles are okay. You know what kibble brand? You don't have to bad mouth the bad kibbles, but what kibble right. brands do you recommend to maybe do half and half? Like. I, I don't do holistic cooking for my dog, but I do do half and half. So I'll do half kibble, half mixins. So I'll do like green beans, veggies, um, mm -hmm. boiled chicken, things like that. Um, and then when we travel, cause sometimes I travel with my, my dog, I'll have, you know, some kibble in a, in a to-go bag, but um, what brands do you feel are clean brands, you know, decent brands as far as people on a budget or people that are traveling and can't make, you know, fresh food for their dog? No, I think that's that's a great question. And um, ironically, you wouldn't think it, but Petco a couple of years ago came out with a really good brand of food that's really, um, really well priced. Totally, you could do it on a budget. It's called Wholehearted. And um, I just think Petco, since they sell all the brands of dog food, really knew what they were doing. And um, so that I always keep on hand. You know, and especially if I'm like watching someone's dog and the dog's really picky and doesn't want, you know, turkey and rice or something, I have this uh, this kibble on hand all the time. It's called Hold Hearted, and they have, a, you know, they have like a fish based one. They have a white fish. They have a salmon. They have chicken. They have one with grains. They have one with no grains. You know, that's always a big controversy of dogs and should they have grains and wolves never ate grains and blah blah blah. But it's so all what what is the controversy with grain? It's, um, I think years ago, there was a brand uh, that was uh, prescribed, you had to get it from your vet, and they were putting corn in it. And everybody was in an uproar about the added corn, because, um, you know, corn metabolizes its sugar. So you really don't want to give your dog a lot of extra sugar. But um, I don't know if dogs were really getting sick from it. It was just the other brand started bad mouthing the corn, as, it's because it's filler. It's a filler. It's like someone putting in... And a lot of animals are allergic to it. A lot of dogs are allergic to it. Not all, but a lot. Some can eat corn fine. Like, um, but that wholehearted is, is, a, is a really good one. I have Merrick. I know a lot of the, um, I'll volunteer at a lot of dog events for like adoptions. And Merrick is a really good one. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um you're like happy i'm doing a podcast <laughs> yeah. um no he's, he's telling me you know about the dogs but um merrick is a really really good one and they have a one with grains and one without grain and it really depends on your dog you know but i wouldn't give the there's different types of grain you know a lot like a lot a main thing that you you probably make for your dog when you do the half and half is like a rice a white rice or a brown rice and veggies and a, and a, and a protein, which I know is really common. Everyone's like, oh, white rice and chicken, white rice and chicken. It's, you hear it all the time, but you could also do potato. So like I was doing potato, which is like a less thought of starch for animals. But um, with, with Buddy, I used to use potato all the time because potato has more vitamins and minerals and Buddy was on the skinny side. So he needed the calories, you know, but with the mix-ins, yeah, the, the wholehearted Merrick, um, just food for dogs. They cook it for you. 
Um, but my recipes are simple. Like I, these videos are like 11 minutes to maybe a half hour. And I show you how to make it. And they're, they're quite easy and they're fun. Like I'm always saying, if you have a kid, you know, you can do it with your, with your child because they're really fun and they're simple. And um, even when we make the treats or like the, um, the, the, the chews or whatever, instead of using sugar, you can use bananas. I mean, that's like a common thing that people will use instead of adding sugar, but there's a so lot. So you mentioned a couple of things. You mentioned chocolate, you mentioned um, a, a, a caffeine, you mentioned alcohol. What are some other common foods that are dangerous or deadly or might cause allergies in dogs that the average person wouldn't know? You know, they always say onion. Oh, and I didn't realize spinach. that. Yeah, they say onion, but you know, I took care of a pit bull that ate everything and she would <laughs> okay. eat onions. So there's a lot of, um, these are generalizations, you know, cause I've seen dogs that, that have the table scraps are perfectly fine. And I'll do that with Peter sometimes. Like sometimes I'll give Peter pizza crust cause he loves it. Is that meant for dogs? No, but <laughs> it's bread, it's gonna be okay, you know? Um, the definitely a garlic, supposedly garlic isn't good for dogs, but I, again, it's individual and that, that's just a generalization because I've seen people give uh, chicken that's flavored with garlic or has garlic on it. You know, I haven't seen, actually, that's a, a controversy because they'll say garlic is so bad, but some people feed their dog garlic cloves as a natural flea repellent and they'll just feed them garlic cloves and the dog's fine. You know, but that's something they'll say that, of course. Um, I have a neighbor that uses soy sauce on her dog's food. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm always like, is that a little salty for your dog? <laughs> you know, she flavors it with garlic and soy sauce. She puts everything in there and the dog's fine. It's a little Maltese, the dog's fine. But generalizations, that's like a general, like you wouldn't use um, something that could be like bad for humans or, you know, for dogs. Because... There, if you try to, you know, everyone's like, try to think they're like a wolf. They're from a wolf. Would a wolf eat, you know, would a wolf eat salt? Would a wolf eat sugar? Like, that's kind of what I try to think. But it's it's all different. You know? But basically, you want to do it healthy. And all the meals that I make wind up being like keto. Oh, my friend's on the keto diet. She's like, oh, keto. It's so great. So they're really, for someone who's like on a diet or wants to eat clean, clean meaning like there's no salt. There's no extra sugar. There's no extra anything like bad there's no extra fat added there's no extra just anything that's not healthy you know but they're all like these meals are fun and I started doing them all for dogs with issues or you know any kind of like illness or sickness and then um other people were asking me for fun stuff so then I started to do like the pup cakes or you know like I have a coconut chew that Peter's groomer was like, she said her dog had, uh, you know, accidentally or whatever had coconut and coconut's okay for dogs, it's fine for dogs. So even though it's an oil or like a fat, right? Well, this is, I was using, yeah, the coconut oil is a fat, but coconut, like shredded coconut is just the meat of the, of the coconut. So I have these coconut chew cookies that have like the meat in there, but all food, basically all food has some kind of oil or something at least to cook it. And I'll use the coconut oil for the dogs, but you can use olive oil or any kind of oil. But like say your dog with the pancreatitis can't yes. have oil. Yeah. So then you would have to cook it with water or like a broth or keep, keep, the, um, keep the oil low. And like with Peter, since he is on CBD, which is, it's a coconut oil, that's how it, you know, it comes, it's coconut oil, coconut oil base for the dog. Um, uh, so I try to keep his other fats low because he's taking straight up oil because the CBD is in the oil. It's an oil tincture. Yeah. So you just mentioned CBD. Um, that is a medical marijuana derivative. How do you use that with animals? So the reason I got into the CBD <clears throat> was because Peter has epilepsy. Oh, no. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> So um, when it, you know, when we adopted him, he, he had cancer and they had chopped off his penis. Sorry, Peter. Um, and we, that <laughs> Don't was, emasculate you know, him on the podcast. <laughs> I know he doesn't have a pee pee nor any, you know, the whole, so um, <laughs> that's why everybody loves him. He's so, he, um, 
we didn't know we had epilepsy. So he started having these seizures. And um, when he started having, you know, multiple ones or ones that the vet was like, we have to address this. They have two drugs that are really, they're very bad for, to treat, not bad because people take them all the time. It's fent it, not fentanyl, that's on my mind. It's um, phenobarbital. Phenobarbital is in anesthesia. So, you know, when you go under and get, you know, a facelift or say, you know, a real, <laughs> say a real, I don't know what you're talking about. I've never yeah, done anything like that. Real, <laughs> when you got your facelift, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> you got your implants, no. <laughs> the comedy comes out. No, when you, um, when people go under, that's part of it. So basically, it's it's definitely a very strong drug that you want to try to do use other drugs before you have to go to that one for the seizures because it's 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 um their central nervous system. It's really kind of um um like not shutting it down, but it's a very strong drug, and you wanna you want to avoid that. Um, there's also one bromide, which bromide is not as uh it doesn't shut down the nervous system, but it. it can cause diabetes because it does something with the sugar. I don't, I'll, I'm, I'm ignorant about what it does with the sugar, but somehow it metabolizes it. A lot of dogs get like diabetes and sugar problems from the bromide. So I was searching, um, my husband's in the cannabis community. We had a friend that adopted a pug from a puppy mill or rescued a pug. And he was doing the um, CBD for cancer patients for humans. He was working for like a famous guy. I forget his name right now. So he started this company for his own pug. He's like, if it's working for cancer patients, it's got to help a sick dog, the CBD. So it's all CBD, which is part of the marijuana plant. It has a little bit of the THC. It's like 0.03% because it's like, you know how you take, say, everyone's like, I want to take calcium or pregnant women. I want to take calcium, but you're supposed to take like magnesium or vitamin D with it to help it metabolize. Yeah. It's like that with the CBD. Like if you take straight up CBD, it's very difficult for your body to just metabolize it. So you need a little bit of the THC to kind of get it in. It's like, like say me and you go to the party, but we were <laughs> invited by Swiney, right? And Swiney's like, hey, it's Rosie and Sam. Like we needed him to get in. And that's like, <laughs> That little bit of the THC to to make the CBD work really well. Yeah. So, so like you said, it's like having vitamin D with calcium to help metabolize the calcium. It's that. It's that. So um, so I, I met with this this you know the owner. His name's Jay. He's awesome. It was years ago, right when I got Pete. Um, it was like around 2017, 2018, and I met. And then I was like, I'm gonna try the CBD to um, keep away the seizures instead of putting him on the um, phenobarbital or the bromide. And it's been working. It's been working. I take it also for, I started taking it for anxiety because CBD is good for so many things, inflammation, anxiety. I mean, there's really nothing it's bad for. It helps thing. So I was taking it to calm down because I'm very hyper and I was just taking it kind of like to help anxiety. And it, I noticed it was helping my eczema because I have eczema. So that's on the list. So it helps the dog's skin so with Peter, it's helping his, um, his epilepsy, but we noticed his skin got better. And also, you know, he'll jump from like the bed to the couch and this, so once in a while he would get not like a bum leg, but he's like pre-arthritic. So he would, you know, be limping. And then that all went away with the CBD. So That's amazing. So dogs can use CBD in a safe um, dosage, a small dosage. No, it's, they can have a huge dosage. Oh, okay. <laughs> the THC, <laughs> they can have gallons of it. <laughs> THC is so minute in it, it doesn't affect them. Okay, so it's just so the minute. medicinal aspect of it. They're not going to be high. You're not like getting your dog high. No, they don't get high at all. <laughs> okay. And um, even like, there's like a little, a tiny little like two pound chihuahua, she, she, takes a lot of the CBD because she's like constantly barking and she gets anxiety and her mom gives her a lot. It doesn't, the most that would happen is your dog would get sleepy if you gave it like way over the dosage. That's all that would happen. They wouldn't get high or anything like that. And okay. I feed her the strongest one. It's 1800. <laughs> the strongest. And okay. Well, that's really good to know. I know m medical marijuana and, and marijuana is a very powerful, natural, um, holistic drugs. So that's amazing to know. I did not know that. 
but we do need to wrap up. So your show is called Chow Time with Sammy. Four hours? Excuse me? No, I'm kidding. I was like, I'm going to talk for four hours. (laughs) Um, so your show is called Chow Time with Sammy Larson and it's available on YouTube. Is that correct? Yeah, it's on YouTube. And I also have little clips on, on Instagram. And then I have, it's on like the reels on it, or Instagram TV also, but the main one where I go back and forth and anyone who wants to ask me questions, literally I get emails from all over the world. That's like, awesome. Yeah. People ask me about, um, mostly pancreatitis, liver disease, diabetes, epilepsy. Well, I'll have to get, um, off the air. I'll have to get your recipe for pancreatitis because I have my little first son. He's 13 and he's, he, I want him to go on until he's 18. So forever, (laughs) forever. I know. I wish he's starting, he's definitely starting to break down, but I'd love to know your diet for pancreatitis because he does have pancreatitis. He has Cushing's disease. He has a lot of schnauzer bumps and skin stuff as well. So I would love to get your information off off the air. And of course, we will have a link to Sammy's show in the show notes in the YouTube um, description or in the Rockfin description, wherever you're watching this show. So check out her show, Chow Time with Sammy. And if you have a special needs dog, or if you just want to make your dog have a healthier, more holistic diet, then she has all the awesome recipes. Absolutely. Feel free to reach out. I love answering people's questions and emailing and I'll give them my personal email. I give people my cell because I want to help animals and help the person helping the animal. Yeah. And I've been friends with Sammy for a long time and I can confirm that she's a huge animal lover. She's watched my dogs and she really, really cares about animals. So check out her recipes and check out her show, Chow Time with Sammy Larson. Guys, this is the Out of the Box Podcast. I've been Rosie Tran. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Bunny Rosie, Instagram, Out of the Box Rosie. And check out our show on Rockfin. We're now on Rockfin Premium and awesome. all of the podcasts are on there. So check it out. And um, I have all my shows on there. So I'm also starting, I have a new show on there called Hello Crypto Kitty, where I talk about crypto investing. So check out the show. Sammy, where can people find you on social media? On um, my Instagram, which is Chow Time with Sammy Larson. And I'm on Facebook also. That's just Samantha Larson. YouTube, I'm on Samantha Larson. And then I have all the recipes and all my other stuff. And basically everything. I'm on Twitter as um, Sammy Larson. And, um, I mean, I'm on every single thing that I can have the recipes on. <laughs> and she's also a hilarious comedian. So check out her stand-up as well. Sammy, thank you so much for doing the podcast. And I am so excited that you're helping special needs animals and Aww. other animals live a longer, healthier life. Oh, you're so sweet. Thanks for having me. Always good to see you. Yay.